Hey everyone, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 60 of Coffee, Comics, and Comments. Let's show you some great books. We drink some awesome coffee and read some of the comments you guys left on our previous videos. As you can see, I am not alone. I have my good friend Bob. Bob, how are you? Doing well, doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good. Today's the day after Thanksgiving for us. We're filming this a little bit early. We both look a little full. Just a is, little bit. Which is fine. <laughs> but you know what? We always start off with the coffee we're drinking. Yes. And of course, the official coffee shop of Comics with Bueller is Mocha <laughs> Express. And I'm drinking an eggnog latte yet again. This is my go-to coffee for the whole month of December. Mm -hmm. And for as long as they will have eggnog, I'll be getting it. There you go. <laughs> Bob, what are you having? I actually have a iced coffee today with some sugar-free Irish cream sweetener inside of it, and it's delightful. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but he likes it. He's on I his do. diet. Like he's, he's losing weight. Losing he looks like weight. a new man. Rapidly. <laughs> Rapidly. That's perfect. That's what we like to hear. He's going to be around forever. He's going to be dunking the basketball hoops and all this stuff here pretty soon. Exactly. There you go. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. We have a lot to cover today. Yeah, we do. It is a great topic. And I got to tell you, the topic today is variants, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And there were so many comments on the video. And it was really hard to choose the comments that we're going to read. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we have more comments on this one than we ever have to read before. There's wow. like seven of them that we're reading. And one of them is like a page long. So it wow. should be a lot of fun. Passionate subject. Yes. A lot of people have a lot of great opinions on this. And we're looking forward to sharing them. But we always start off with our first five so we're going to start off with our first five books, and this week is a autograph theme for me because he's always showing off autograph books. Yeah, and I don't want to be left out in the cold. Come on. So I'm going to show my autograph books. Sweet. Okay. So the first one I have is right here. I don't know if you saw it, but it is Jim Shooter autograph. This is that Marvel like uh, charity book, right? What not? Pretty cool book. I like that. And then I have Venom. Number three, autographed by Donnie Cates. There you go. That's a great autograph there. It's really good. And all my autographs are special. And I'll tell you why they're special. Because every one that I have has a story behind it. Uh, I didn't just wait in the line and pay a fee. <laughs> <laughs> I actually talked to these gentlemen and, and had some time with them. So they're very special to me. There we go. Next one I have is Infinity Gauntlet number one, autographed by, take a guess. Jim Shooter. Jim Shooter. Or Jim Starlin. There you go. There Jim go. Starlin. One of the two. There you go. Next one up is Amazing Spider-Man number 129. Autographed by Jerry Conway. Oh, nice. First appearance of the Punisher. That's a legend right there. Very nice guy. Now, this one is a special exception. Okay. And you don't know who this person is. I don't know who the artist is, you mean? No. Okay. Because this book is Black Panther number one. Mm -hmm. And this was a blank cover. And this was sent to me from Heroes to Icons. He's a fellow YouTuber. And he did the artwork on this cover. Wow. And man, I tell you, it's one of my favorites. He actually sent it to me last Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I always like showing it off every now and then because it looks fantastic and it's autographed. It's an incredible cover. Yeah. So from Heroes to Icons, I love this book. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, it's one of my favorites. So anytime I get the chance to show it, I'm going to take advantage of it. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. No, That's like my that. first five. Way to go, man. And so... Um, my first five? Let's see them. <laughs> uh, so since the theme was variants, I brought variants today. Oh, that makes sense. And so I have uh, an Amazing Spider-Man number 12, which has Galactus on the cover. Hmm, and, interesting. Uh, interesting, but uh, we have one of our commenters actually comment on this very cover. So Coincidence. Uh, coincidence. Think, I think not. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we have uh, Avengers number 11, and this is the Villains variant, which has Super Scroll on it. Nice. And then we have um, Spawn number 301, and this is the Alex Ross variant. And then we have Batman number 80, and they did a lot of deceased covers for their crossovers, and that's the deceased variant. That's also going to come into play a little earlier. Is it A really? little later, sorry. Wow. And uh, that's right, we did get one. And yep. then this is Venom, and uh, this is the Immortal variant, which is a wraparound cover. Sam likes the wraparound covers. I like them, too. I like the Daredevil one. I thought that was really amazing. I bet you did. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my That's your first five. five. Mm -hmm. Those are great books. Autograph books, variants. What more could you ask for? Let's go ahead and jump into the topic. All right. Are you ready go. for this? I'm ready for it. Okay. These are the comments that people left on our latest sneak peek video that came out last Wednesday. The topic was variants, good or bad, yeah. let us know how you feel. 
There were a ton of comments, Mm -hmm. a lot of opinions, like I said before, and we're going to share those with you guys, and we're going to kind of discuss our feelings on these comments, because some great points were raised, and some things I weren't wasn't aware of. So, right, looking right. forward to it. So, Absolutely. Bob, you're up first. He didn't bring his eyes. I didn't. I so didn't. So, give him a little bit of leeway. <laughs> Just bear, bear with me for a little bit. The first comment comes from Varangi and Vigilante. He says, "I often curse variants, but I'm buying them nonetheless when I, when, I, when I love the art. Thinking about it, it's not a lot of money to spend on art." Most important is that you have to get to the mindset that you're not forced to buy any of them and only get them if you really want them. I think the only valid criticism towards variant covers is that they take money out of the comic book budget that would otherwise go to other titles. I think that's a great point. I think there's a couple of things in there that I really like. I have been in a comic shop where I bought two copies, a regular copy and a variant copy, and decided not to buy this other book that I wanted. Um, I don't know if that's happened to you. Obviously, you have variants right there that you're showing. I do. It does take away money sometimes because you see it and you're like, oh, I got to have it. He also raises the fact that, you know, you don't have to buy it. But on the other hand, we are consumers. We have the mentality of got to have them all. Sure. And the more they put out, obviously, there's a lot of people out there I know that are completionists and like to have the whole set. Absolutely. Is that something that you look for? I, I do. You know, and uh, so so first of all, I just want to say his comment on that it takes money out of the budget. Uh, I have to say that comics nowadays are much more expensive than they ever used to be, and it really does. I mean, I spend anywhere from forty to sixty dollars a week on on comics, and when variant covers are there and I'm having to make a decision on my buy, yeah. it does take away from the budget I would probably spend on other books. And so, since I, I'm predominantly a Marvel guy, yeah. and uh, you know, you're so a, you're a superhero you're, guy, you're not doing too well then, are you? <laughs> well, the problem with it is, is that the trade-off for me is, do I buy that independent, co- you know, uh, yeah. comic that I, you know, don't know nothing about but sounds intriguing, or do I buy this cover because I love the art? And that's usually what the trade-off is for me. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so it does get that way with me. It does take away out of the budget of books that I otherwise would buy. Now let me ask you. I know that that copy of uh, that Marvel one, the one thousand book, came out. Yeah. And I sent you a picture of that Daredevil one. Absolutely. And that was the variant cover. How much was that one? Was that cover price? No. Well, yeah, that that was cover price. Okay. Now that now that, that did you buy a different copy of that or just that one? I I I bought two copies. Okay. I bought the the original cover and then I bought the Daredevil cover, and then uh, but there was a one in two hundred variant of that cover yeah. i did not buy that because that one that <laughs> yeah. one was 125 bucks if yeah. i wanted to buy it and yeah. i just didn't have the budget for that and i you know i did get the cover that i wanted but you wanted the other one didn't i you? sure did <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. well that's that's the thing we want it we see it and we all oh, it looks great and we want it even right. though and i've said this many times as soon as you flip that cover over it's the same book uh, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I mean, there's really nothing special inside of the book beyond the the artwork on the cover. And, and and let's just be honest, we're in a renaissance of amazing artwork on covers. Uh, I I wish the inside of the books were as good as as what they're doing on the outside of the books. Uh, but really, we, we've never seen covers so beautiful yeah. in in the comics industry. And so that's part of it. I would agree. All right, there's another comment here. That one's you as well. Mm-hmm. Sure. And this one comes from Grail one eight seven. He says, way too many. Uh, Just look at Deceased. It's a six-part miniseries, and they have over 114 covers between publisher covers, retail and creator variant covers, and exclusives. And then he also says, keep up the great content, Bueller. Thanks a lot, Grail87. Yeah, thank you, Grail. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware that Deceased had that many for a six-issue series. I knew there was a lot because I cover them on the video all the time. Right. But... You know, he raised the question of all the other ones, the retailer exclusives, all the other artist ones or whatnot, they're exclusive to them. When you add them all up, it's well over 100 books for a six-issue series. That's a lot. It really is, and that's pretty crazy for DC. You know, normally, you know, Marvel is considered the culprit, uh, but and DC usually puts out only a few variants. But in this particular case, 114 different variants, that's uncharacteristic of them. My thing is, is I, I watch your show, and a lot of times I will pick up you know, on variant covers that I want just by watching that. Uh, but you know, to find out 
all of the variant covers that are available, that's not too easy to find either. Yeah. And so, you know, some of these these covers, they come out, and I don't think everybody knows about them. Yeah. Well, like you said, 114, if you just did the math on that and say they were all just cover price, which they're not. Right. But if they were cover price and for someone who wants to complete the whole set, mm -hmm. it's over $500. That's crazy. That's for crazy. a six issue set. And so do you can do we consider that do we consider that a cash grab by DC? I mean is is that what they're actually their their intention is is to try to get as much as they can out of those particular books? I think it's a combination. I think uh, I think the market kind of wants it to be honest with you. I mean I they're not going to produce a product if nobody wants it. Right. And if they produce a product that's not selling then they're not going to make that product anymore. Obviously they keep on making variants. Yep. There is a market. People are buying them. For sure. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other books that are that need to be purchased in order to get those variants right. that just sit there for years and they go in the dollar bins. And right. that's what I look for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bueller's fodder. There you go. Okay, I'm up here. The next one. <clears throat> and this one is from Ben Fong. It says too many variants with too many store exclusives. Variants cause overstock of regular comic books. If a store must have a store exclusive limit to one book a year, this kind of touches on what I just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, what's your feeling on like store exclusives? Do you like those? Uh, it's in some cases. In in my particular, uh, in, when I buy things, the the thing about the store exclusives, they only work if they're in. Uh, if I benefit from it, yeah, right. I mean, really, when it comes down to it. I don't, I don't care about the store exclusive unless it's a Daredevil or, or a character that I really want. Yeah. But uh, because of the fact that store ex exclusives, um, you know, be, uh, hold their value and are expensive right out the gate, they're highly sought. And so I'm kind of mixed on it. You know, I mean, I, I don't like the fact that there's a um, a cover that a store is only going to get one copy of. Yeah. I don't think that's fair to everybody else. But when you're talking about a collector's market, and like we talked about last week, a speculator's market, those are the issues that are going to go up in price really quickly, and they will hold their value. Yeah. He made a comment about possibly having a store only have one exclusive per year uh, for that store. Mm -hmm. I don't think that works out, because if they have the clientele to support exclusives, and as long as they have that clientele, then I think there shouldn't be a limit. You know, it's they really they know their clientele. If right. they can afford to go out and pay the money to get a store exclusive, because what they have to do, they have to buy a certain amount of books sure. to qualify for an exclusive. Now they're paying like the the uh, wholesale price, but they have to buy so many. Right. But if they're aware that their clientele will buy that many books, then I don't think there should be any limit. Now he also touches on the fact that the overstock of the books, and like I said before. Mm -hmm. A lot of these comic shops, and this is a common practice, mm -hmm. when I say an incentive variant of 1 in 25, okay, that doesn't mean that out of 25 books, this one shows up. What that means is that comic shop has to buy 25 books in order to qualify to buy that one book right? type thing. It's not just randomly placed in every 25 books, there's that book. Right. They have to buy that many books. Now, a comic shop does that, or they buy 50 copies of the book to get one book they probably sell 10 of the regular one, 40 of them go in the dollar bins, and they get that one variant cover. Now, they don't pay more for that variant comic. No, no they They're don't. They're paying the wholesale price, mm -hmm. but they're having to buy all the other books that are just left over. And that's all actually inflate sales, because they, they just don't get sold. Right, that, exactly right. My, my, my thing about it is, is that, and of course, you know, just to give a, an, an explanation, there is a difference between in, in a ratio variant as opposed to uh, um, uh, uh, incentive variants. Mm -hmm. And an incentive variant is what you just said. The store has to buy so many in order to get so many copies of, of this. Yeah. A ratio variant is they're going to create this many variants based upon how many are printed. Yeah. So if they print 100 books, here comes one, another 100 books, here comes one, and they're doing that without any incentive whatsoever. That's a ratio. Yeah. But the store exclusives, or, or sorry, uh, incentives, um, when 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 those come out, the, my problem with that is that there are not a lot of comic shops that are going to be able to buy 
uh, the 200 copies of Spawn, let's yeah. just say, to get that exclusive cover that, that, that people are, are, are searching after. And this is where I start to wonder, and, and this is just speculating, this is as we're talking, I'm thinking about, this is where I start to wonder whether or not this plays into uh, DC, Marvel, ind you know, independent companies catering to larger shops because the smaller shops will never be able to have those covers inside yeah. of their stores, right? And so when you have somebody like Mile High Comics inside of Denver, I'm just picking sure. that out of the hat, right? They can afford to buy, you know, four to 500 big books to get those variants, but they're no, they know that they're going to make a certain amount of money off of selling those variants, yeah. right? And, and so, uh, you know, really when it comes down to it, the incentives I like, but I don't think that they cater to every shop out there, uh, just like our local comic shop uh, yeah. that, that we know, right? They would never be able to buy 200 copies of Spawn number 300. They'd never be able to sell them. Now, there's not a lot of big comic shops out there. Not all, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's very minor. When you, when you think of a comic shop that can afford to buy 500 copies of Spawn 300, it's not a lot. No. I mean, it's only a handful. I Most mean, I, I can think of about 10 to 12 different shops that are across the United States that are big enough to be able to buy. Yeah, that's not yeah. a lot. No. That's not a lot at all. Compared compared to the rest of the United States, no, it's, it's crazy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to move on. And this next comment is a big one, so bear with me here. Tony Miles had a lot to say, and there's a lot to digest on this comment. All so right. uh, we'll see how this goes. Tony Miles says, Personally, I feel that there are way too many variants. Then add to that store and con exclusives and it just seems to be a money grab especially the way diamond does some books where you have to order x amount of a unrelated title to even qualify for a certain cover i was at a comic convention recently where one of the dealers who wasn't even a store owner had his own exclusive made of a book side note he said the guy was super nice so that's great um while i think some of the variants are pretty amazing i wonder if they devalue books with regular covers. I think the other companies should take a clue from DC and just offer two covers. That being said, I also think variants should have something to do with the book they are on. I have an amazing Spider-Man with Galactus cover, which has nothing to do with the actual book or character. I just wonder what that's about. That being said, I don't have a problem if comic shops want to order more variants. I'm also okay with convention exclusives. Thanks for posing these questions and stimulating what I hope to be most civil conversation. Some variants are fine, but does any book need to have anywhere from 10 to 50 covers for the same issue? Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. Lot to There's digest there. A lot. So, what do you think? Let me just kind of compose myself and go ahead. What do you think about a bunch of stuff there? <laughs> Thank you, Tony. By the way. So, and, and I, I agree with him when he's talking about uh, you know covers that have content that has nothing to do with the book on the inside. But yet you um, buy them. But yet I bought it. I mean, that to me that was one of the most incredible Galactus <laughs> pieces of art that I've seen in a long time. So. I mean, I was buying it for that. So per I, I'm perfect part of the problem. example that Conan one that came out earlier in the year Re exactly. had Spider Man on the front, or was it uh, Ven maybe it was Carnage? It was Carnage, but it was like nothing to do with Conan. Nope, not okay. At all. But it's probably one of the best covers of the year. Absolutely, I absolutely. Know. But I mean, but that's the thing. I mean, that that's what they're hoping to do is to gain you know interest in that particular cover because of you know favorite characters like me. You know, I, I if I see a Doctor Doom cover. I, I buy it. I mean, I try to buy just about everything Dr. Doom that I can, especially if it's good artwork. And so I'm part of the problem when it comes to that. Now, I won't buy all of them, uh, but I do agree with him there. Um, and, you know, <laughs> as far as having, you know, too many variants, I agree with that as well. Um, you, I think it was the fa uh, Fantastic Four when they, you know, came back out with a, yeah. right? I think they had what something like seventy-five different covers for issue number one. Yeah, it was ridiculous the amount of covers, and uh, same same type of thing. I mean, I even think that they had retailer covers that people never even saw. Yeah, and I just think it's way too much. So I want to dissect this a little bit more. Sure. Um, he mentioned something in there, especially the way Diamond does some books mm -hmm. where you have to order X amount of an unrelated title to even qualify for certain covers. Now, I don't know if you're aware of that practice, but literally there is a practice to where you have to order or sell through a separate title 
say you have to have a sell through of Avengers number 10 in order to get Amazing Spider-Man B cover. That's crazy. I, I that is a normal practice. That goes on, has been going on for years. Right. And it doesn't have anything to do with the actual book that you want. But you have to have like a sell through or certain ratio to qualify to get a different title. Now, I know this happens. A lot of stores have big orders, mm -hmm. and there's other stores that have small orders. Right. It's either easy for them to sell through a small order. If one shop orders four copies of the books and they sell through those books, they qualify to get other books. Shops work together. Other bigger shops are partners with smaller shops, and they can use their smaller shops to qualify for those ratio variants. I know that happens. I can name people who do that. Wow. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because why should you have to purchase something else to get the one that you want. Exactly right. I, I, I actually don't like that concept. I mean, there may be nothing wrong with it, but I don't like that concept. I like the concept that shops are working together. Anything that promotes unity in, in, inside of you know our community, I'm all for it. Uh, but you know, to have the practice of making you buy something just to be able to get a particular cover, especially if it's unrelated, I, th I think is, I mean, excuse my language, but bull. I mean, I was going to go further than that, but really, I, you know, and when it, if you talk about like a Marvel B cover uh, mm -hmm. and you have to buy, like you just said, a, a, something else, does, is, does Marvel part of that or is that just straight diamond? Do you know? I think it's a combination of both. I actually don't really know. Uh, from what I've heard, it's mainly diamond, but they're in bed together. I mean, that's they are. Diamond distributes their books. Sure. Okay. So there has to be some acknowledgement of what's going on. Right. I, you know, before the show, I tried to do some research and I tried to find you know, actual numbers as far as uh, sales for variants, uh, as opposed to, you know, A cover to B cover, you know, how many were sold, how many were produced. And I couldn't find anything anywhere. And I, I, I mean, I've gone to some really great industry sites, yeah. and that information is just not there. And I don't know why that's not public. I don't think it is. I don't. I think that uh, as far when you see a sales total, it's the combined of every cover. Exactly. And I, I've looked at that too. If you guys know of a place where we can find it, please let us know. Because for me, I have not been able to find it. I've looked for it as well. Because right. when I'm doing my research on variants, you know, for all my videos and stuff. Questions like that come up. Absolutely. So I, I, mean, I like, can't find it. Like I talked about, you know, a, a ratio variant earlier. I would love to know just how many of those variants were printed. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, at, at that particular point, you can kind of see if, if it's a low print run, that's going to make the book more valuable, as yeah. quite, especially if you're, you know, looking at speculating or, you know, for it to hold its value. And, and that information is just not there. Yeah. Okay, Bob, you're up. Next comment from John. John Munoz leaves our next comment, and he said, uh, these videos are re really help me to decide uh, what I'm going to purchase. And, of course, that's, that's Bueller's sneak peek videos. Uh, awesome, awesome comment. Uh, he said, as for the variants, uh, I love variants. However, they're a bit overkill. They need to change it up. Rant coming in three, two, one. <laughs> Don't just change the cover. Change something on the inside. Give me a reason to buy the regular cover or give me a reason to buy the variant. I think I mentioned this before. I think they should change some, some very minor details from the regular to the variant. Not something major just in a panel or a page, uh, that, but it doesn't affect the story in any way. I feel it would make it what I would call a true variant. What are your thoughts on that? Very, very interesting comment. Yeah, I, I've never thought of that before, John, to be honest with you. And when I read your comment, that's why I wanted to bring it up on, on the show. Um, I, what would they change? I mean, that's the thing that would, uh, you know, besides changing the artwork in the story, um, I, I, the wording has to stay the same, obviously, if obviously. they're telling the story. So they could change the artwork in the book itself. Sure, maybe they could show a, a panel that has a different view. Like, you know, in the original it's an upshot, but maybe yeah. in, they change the panel so that it's a, a straight across shot. Or maybe like, something extra. Or something like some extra. E extra concept art at the end of the book. Sure, that or would be, I would love that. Yeah. So, but that, he's right though, that would make it a true variant you know, from the original, rather than just having a wraparound cover yeah. that, that that is different. So I, I, I like that concept, and I, I really think that, that I would be more interested in that. Well, here here's a question for you. This just popped to mind. And so the Absolute Carnage came out, mm -hmm. okay? 
and in the back of 20 of the regular books was a personal drawn by what was what was it uh bagley that mark bagley that's yeah, right mark bagley and it was mm-hmm. like literally one out of 20 sketch things in the back of the book randomly randomly yeah. in there and it's the regular cover from what i understand of the books right would you consider that a variant i do consider that a variant i mean because i mean it you know it's funny because when you have i think we were talking about this earlier when when you when you have a variant and um you, there's a was a, there, there's a slight slight change inside of it. It, it, it actually makes it different than the original, right? Yeah. And so, it, but it, I think we have another comment. It's going to talk about that. The original will hold its it'll hold its value. Yeah. Uh, but the the variant, on the other hand, that it becomes so special because it's such a smaller print run yeah. that automatically it, it's going to catch like wildfire. Yeah. I loved when they did that. Actually, yeah. you know, it was like uh, you're finding the Wonka <laughs> ticket. You know, <laughs> and so you guys know, there only seven of them have been found. Uh, at least reported. So there's still 13 of them out there for Absolute Carnage number one. The main cover has sketches from Mark Bagley at the back of the book. So check your book. You might have it. I'm pretty sure those had a full sell through. Wow. I don't think any of those were, uh, they went on to, you know, second, third, fourth printing because of full sell through. So they're out there. Right. So look at your books. You might have one of 20 Mark Bagley original sketches in the back of your book. I think that'd be. I looked at mine right away. Uh, yeah, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> I did too. That'd be crazy going to the Fra- Frankenstein comic book swap two years from now and finding one of those. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I, I, I every time I go to a shop, I look yeah. if, if they still have any on the shelf or in the back issues. I go look and I'll, I'll peek in there. And, How could you not, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm up next, mm-hmm. and uh, this is from Tim and Amanda uh, Cronoli. I think that's right. Uh, Marvel is my favorite. However, they make far too many variants. DC, to me, surprisingly has a tasteful amount of variants. Of course, DC as well has overdone it at times, but not like Marvel. Go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, that, that, that's, that's exactly right. Marvel, you know, they're notorious. I mean, every week when you come out with a video... You know, I'm. I'm kind of, it's always the most. It always, it always is. You know, I mean, it, I mean, out of the total video, which you know, ten to fifteen minute video, I would have say a good five to ten minutes is based on Marvel and all the variants that they come out with. Yeah, and and, and they are true. I do like what DC does, where they they just have a few variants, A and B covers, but. I mean, they're they're culprits too. I mean, we just had a comment that showed the deceased book six different yeah. issues and they had 114 different covers. So they do do it as well. There was a lot of people that commented about DC and they liked their model of the AB cover, mm-hmm. and a lot of comments actually, you know, majority of the comments were commending DC on their approach towards variants. Now they do have some exceptions. They usually just do it with event books, sure. you know, the deceased or the. Uh, Batman Who Laughs type thing or Heroes something like Crisis. that. Yeah, and they really go all out. But even Heroes of Crisis only had a few books. Yeah, just one and two, yeah. A and B covers. So the business model of the A and B, and not to mention they are not ratio variants, they are not incentive variants. For the most part, they are one for one. The retailer can order either one, both, or you know whatever they right. want. There's yeah. no qualifications they have to be qualified for or whatever, so that's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. I like that model. I do not like, and I've said this before, I do not like the cardstock. I do not like the one dollar price hike on the variant. That is actually a publisher finding a way to charge more for a variant book than, than the regular cover price. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure that cardstock doesn't cost an extra dollar. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Right. I mean, it's it's the same thing with with the magazine format. I mean, they found a way to be able to produce a book that's going to charge you eight nine bucks for it, and it it, it is. It's to I me. Mean, I like those magazine size yeah. because of the artwork that's inside of them, but really, they're, they're, they are charging more money for it, and that's a cash grab. They just had those plastic covers. The acetate covers. Acetate yeah. covers. They didn't charge a dollar more for those, nope. did they? Nope, they didn't at all. <laughs> Think about that, DC. Yeah. We got you. <laughs> all right, Bob, you got the last comment of all the right. day. And this one comes from uh, Raider Mike Raider Mike 10. Uh, he says, I love variants, but then I have to choose the A covers because those usually go up when it's a key issue. Wish the variants would spike at the same time as the A covers. That is a great comment. Uh, he's right on the money, and I was actually talking to you about this before we started. Mm-hmm. It's always the regular cover for the most part that sees the spike. This is true. Perfect example 
and it's kind of faded since then. But Naomi, that came out earlier in the year, right, spiked big time. Number one was selling forty bucks, fifty bucks. The regular cover, not the variant. The variant was like at the most twenty. Right, it, it was less than half. Yeah, and you know, you would think a variant. You know, it's different because, like we said earlier, DC has a one for one ratio. Sure. But it always seems to be the regular cover, which is the one that sees the spike the most. And you get more bang for your buck, because right. more than likely you paid cover price or less, and you see a bigger return on your investment, because Absolutely. you're not paying a ratio variant or a incentive variant price for the other issue. Right. Yeah. Now, I myself don't like this. I mean, I, I know that it happens, but when I make that decision to buy the B cover, because it's got the cooler artwork on, on it, I'm actually need to keep in mind that I am foregoing that that may not spike as much as the regular issue does. Yeah. And so again, you know, I don't want to be forced to have to buy both issues because I don't <laughs> have the budget to be able to keep buying. Con- I mean, if it was the old days, you know, the comic prices have gone up so, so much. I don't know how anybody can buy, you know, massive amounts of comics these yeah. days. I mean, that it's just a lot of money for the, for the hobby. It is a lot of money. Well, that's our conversation about variants. I think it was great. I thought it was really good. Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Every week, we ask a question on our sneak peek video that comes out on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. This last week's one was about variants. This next week's one, which the video will be out this Wednesday, Mm -hmm. is who had the best year? The Mm -hmm. year's almost over. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Did Marvel, DC, or some independent have the best year for 2019? Great question. That's going to be the question. We're coming to an end. For the most part, all the major events have already happened. This is true. So we'll see what you think, and we'll talk about it next week. So that should be a lot. He didn't even know. I just made it up. pretty (laughs) Pretty good. But also, let us know how you feel about the variants in this video as well. Did we have a good conversation? Did we... uh, um, relay your concerns enough or do you still have a problem with variants like most of us do that's just the way it is but now we're going to move on to our final five and then after our final five we move on to our review and this week we're going to be reviewing folk lords folk lords folk lords yeah i tried so hard to make sure i got that right uh but we'll do our final five and then we'll move on to review and we have some special announcements we'll also say as well so i will those are yours to pull those down sure I'm up my next ones. Here we go. Here's one of mine. X-Men number 62. Autographed by Neil Adams. Mr. Adams. Obviously, I have some history with Neil Adams. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The next one is Justice League number 12. One of my favorite covers. Absolutely. And this is autographed by uh, uh, Alex Sinclair and uh, Williams. Joshua Williams. No, not John. Scott Williams. Oh, Williams. Scott Williams. Scott Williams mm-hmm. hosted their panel, my very first panel I ever hosted that was theirs. Absolutely. Uh, this one is Wolverine number one, autographed by Chris Claremont. Oh, you can't beat that. Hosted his panel. That mm-hmm. was a dream come that true. Was, that was you a, were in the audience. That was great. I was front row, man. Front row. <laughs> man. Uh, this next one is Amazing Spider Man number 375, autographed by two people. Mm-hmm. Randy Emberlum and uh, Mark Bagley. Nice. both Very them, nice. Both of them great guys to talk to. Emberlum is local here. He does a uh, great summer camp for kids and everything. Teaches them how to draw. And Bagley always likes coming to Portland. So really, That's really awesome. good guy. And last one I have is one of my all-time gems in my mm-hmm. collection. And uh, this is my Spider-Man number one autographed by Todd McFarlane. And this was autographed like within like the week it came out oh that's awesome um which is i wanted to show that because there's a great event coming up here december 10th at 7 p.m pacific standard time at i like comics i like comics they have a bunch of autographs that you can get from tom mcfarlane um eric larson mm-hmm. uh, a couple other people mark silvestri there Jim you go. valentino robert kirkman it's it's just going to be a great event if you're local please go check it out we'll put the link down below to i like comics online doc i think that's what it is mm-hmm. check it out it's going to be awesome we're going to be there absolutely and uh i'm going to have them actually sign my yearbook are you, are you really yeah that's kind of nice. what i decided to do so it should I, be a lot of fun i just want spawn number one personalized there you go say. Be, <laughs> you know, here, here, i want to say something really quick what's that hands down todd mcfarlane has the best autograph in the business i i i would i would say next to or right adjacent to <laughs> jim steranko no <laughs> <laughs> they both have great autographs but anyway next books <laughs> <laughs> sorry man that's all right so uh, i you know me i love daredevil and so i brought 
uh, multiple types of variants uh, for, of Daredevil covers that I bought. Uh, this one is a Virgin variant for Marvel Comics 1000. This is the uh, Daredevil number 8, which is a themed uh, variant, which is the Carnage Eyes cover. Look how gentle he is. Because I'm not going to drop it this time. <laughs> yeah. Daredevil likes to just take a flying leap every now and then. This was from War of the Realms. This is a, an, an artist variant by Marco Cicchetto. This is Daredevil number 612, and this is the Netflix variant, which is one of my favorite variants because it's got... Uh. It's got uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, this guy over here sighing. And then this right here is a Comic-Con variant by uh, Joe Quesada uh, that just came out uh, new from New York Comic-Con. But there's a um, smattering of different types of variants, Daredevil covers. Is there any way you can do one without Daredevil? No. Nope. <laughs> every week, man, every well, week. I got to represent, right? It's some Daredevil good stuff right there. Well, those are awesome, man. I like those a lot. I Thanks. actually, uh, we've talked about the Daredevil on Netflix show before. And yeah. And we'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's jump into our next segment, which is our review. And this is uh, Folklords by Boom Studios. Yeah. And there's a reason why we're doing these reviews really quick now, and I want to kind of get into it. Starting next year, I've always had a lot of people ask me, uh, please do more reviews on comics. It's been something that's been asked of me for almost two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to listen to you guys, and I'm going to start doing more reviews about comics. We are actually partnering up with a bunch of studios. A bunch of publishers are going to be sending us their comics. Mm. We're going to be doing reviews on those comics. Uh, early reviews. Uh, I'll just run down the list really quick. So far, we have Source Point Press, Dynamite, Valiant Comics, Mad Cave, Black Box, Absolute Comics Group, and Dark Horse Comics are all on board. And that's just the start. That's we're, gonna, awesome. we're going to have them all. And they're going to be sending us books, and we're going to be reading them and reviewing them. And, and they've also uh, volunteered to help us out with our giveaways. So oh, that is amazing. A whole bunch of neat stuff is going to be coming your guys' way. And I want to say thank you really quick to TKO for sending us some great uh, graphic novels. They sent us their whole collection. There's that one, point for point, or pound for pound. The Banks, Sentinel by Jeff Lemire. I like that one. I like that one, mm -hmm. And Eve of Extinction, also. That, that one intrigues me. Very cool. Let me show this one again. Pound for pound, not point for point. There you go. Got to get it right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Very cool. It's been a long episode. <laughs> but let's go ahead and review this book. Sure. And this book came out two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Right. It was kind of slim pickings this last week. Yep. And uh, But I read this book, mm -hmm. and I want to know your thoughts on it first. So, um, for me, I mean, it, it starts you off in a kind of fantasy realm, uh, which is my wheelhouse. I've always loved that. Um, and the, inside the book, you have a, a group of uh, young adults or, or uh, young kids that are coming of age. And it's practice to go on a quest to be, before you enter into adulthood. Yeah. And there's one particular kid who's different than the rest, and he has dreams of our world and what it looks like to have technology and things like that. And so uh, uh, as far as all these kids doing quests, uh, you know, they do all these smattering of different things, but his quest is to find our world. And he has to go to the folklords in order to find a way to be able to get there. And that's kind of how the story begins. I love the concept. Yeah, uh, it, I think it really set up um, everything, go, you know, for what book two is going to be. Uh, there uh, they did a, a lot of uh, character development in a very short period of time, which I liked. Um, wasn't, you know, 100% crazy about the artwork, uh, but at the same time, the vehicle I, I thought was great. I'm on board. I can't wait to see what issue two is going to be like. Okay. This is out of left field. Okay. And I haven't shared this with him, mm -hmm. but I read this book, and I felt the same way you did. Mm -hmm. But as I thought about it a little bit, I tried to find things that relate to that story. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is way out there. Have you ever seen the movie The Village? Yeah. Okay. What if this book is like that? What if this kid is seeing these things because they actually do exist? And what if this place where they're at is something like The Village? To like the, the, the elders mm -hmm. have decided to create this, you know, utopia society type thing. Mm -hmm. And they are not letting people know that what is actually outside the forest type right. thing. Right. 
Because in the book, they're limited to where that you can go. And, and and as soon as the folklords are mentioned, they're like, that's something you don't do. Yes. Right? Just like in the village, I'm, I'm, think, I'm sure that's why you're saying, yes. you don't go beyond the boundaries yeah. because these things are going to come after you, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, so like the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I get where you're going with that, you know, and that would be an interesting concept. We're going to see yeah. going forward. but Now, it's loosely, I'm loosely using that as a reference, and I'm sure that when they wrote this book, Maybe that might have popped in their mind. Obviously, there is more of a, a fantasy and magic involved in this book. Sure. I mean, there's like orgs and stuff like that. Right, you know, right. Uh, another scenario would be literally like taking Frodo mm -hmm. from Lord of the Rings and sticking him here in Portland, Oregon, type right. thing, and seeing how that went. <laughs> that thing. But I liked it. It was the opposite of what you think it was going to be. Okay, right. you think that like. When I look at a book like this, and I'm like, oh, this kid, he's living with us, type thing, and he imagines this make-believe world right okay? right they turned the trope upside yeah they down. turned it upside down yeah and i liked it i so. did too I, I think my favorite part of, of it was um they had all all these other uh, kids that were you know coming of age right alongside of their main character and the quests that they were going on which many were mentioned were all the different types of quests that you would normally see in a fantasy world yeah. going to you know save a damsel in distress going to kill this particular creature going to find uh, you know this particular treasure and I just really enjoyed all the different quests that yeah. they were mentioning and then of course our, our main character has the quest to find us yeah right but I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it um, but turning that trope on, on its head I think is an interesting concept yeah. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. And I think, uh, like I said, the question we're going to be asking, you know, who had the best year 2019? Mm -hmm. Boom Studios is right there. Boom has had a really good They've year. They've put show. out some titles this year that are just like knocked out of the park. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. I'm curious to see what people say. So yeah. make sure you check out that video on Wednesday. Uh, it's your sneak peek video. There's no reason you sh shouldn't watch it because it shows you all the new books and it is the number one most watched preview for new comic book video on YouTube and that's all because of you guys. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Well, that was a long conversation. This is a long video. This is the new format, and that's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to say thank you so much to everyone who watched. I want to say thank you to Bob from Everything Comics. What do you got coming up, Bob? Well, we have the uh, Coffee and Comics, uh, you know, having coffee with my comics video that drops every Saturday. I do have a couple of new things that will be coming up. I'm planning on doing uh, some countdown to Comic-Con videos. Uh, for local comic cons that are happening and then I got a project that I'm working on with my wife that I can't wait to to, to uh, drop on you guys uh, that'll be coming up in the next couple of months uh, but hey you know I, I just love talking comics hanging out with Bueller and uh, thanks for having me on guys awesome Bob did a great job yet again thanks all right guys thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe you know what to do I'll see you next time bye <laughs>